Good morning. My name is Jackie Chischilli, and I'm with Starboard Consulting. And this morning, we're going to talk to you about um, ad hoc reporting and our 10-minute tech talk for Tuesdays here. That's a tongue twister. But more specifically than ad hoc reporting, we're actually going to talk to you about how to format those reports so that they're usable and um, you can achieve the goals that you intend for the report. So we're gonna talk about filtering, grouping, and sorting the data that you have in your report. Before we do that though, I did wanna mention that we're going to continue our Tuesday at 10 Maximo Tech Tips. And next month in November, we're going to focus on industry solutions. So be sure that you join us for those very important and very informative 10-minute tech talks on industry solutions in the month of November. Okay, so before we jump into Maximo, I just wanted to show a couple screenshots to give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about. This is your normal report that you get out of Maximo uh, before you do any filtering, sorting, or grouping. And as you can see up here, it's three pages long. And it's just row after row of work orders with their details. But it doesn't really help you find the specific information you need without doing a lot of um, scrolling through lines. So then when we can add grouping, as you can see here, we've grouped our work by work type. And these blue lines here will delineate based on those groups. So we can see, um, you know, we've got the type of corrective maintenance down here. We've got some capital projects, um, some emergency maintenance, and some, you know, preventive maintenance down here at the bottom. Okay, Maximo allows us to group three levels deep. So I went ahead and grouped again by work type and status. So now when we look at our report, it's actually grouped by work type. So we still have our corrective and our emergency maintenance. And down here is another section for emergency maintenance. So we've got one for approved work and one for work that's waiting to be scheduled. So that's how you can group your work and have it in these nice um, divided sections to view by specific whatever business object you decide to group by. Okay, next we want to look at sorting. So we can leave our groups and then we can sort within those groups by any of the other business objects that we have selected for the content in our report. So I went ahead and sorted by failure class. Um, and as you can see over here on the right hand side, we have the failure class now listed in alphabetical ascending order rather than just randomly listed over here on the right hand side. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump into Maximo. Now you can see I'm in Maximo. And I have my report pulled up. I'm going to um, create a report that for approved and waiting to be scheduled work orders for assets. And I'm going to do a list report because the detailed report does not allow you to group because detailed reports print out the information on individual sheets. So I'm going to do a list report. And I've got my content in here. We've all created ad hoc reports in Maximo. So I'm going to go ahead to the format. And this is where we can see um, we can do filtering, grouping, and sorting. And I'm going to save the filtering for last because that's how we actually tell Maximo, you know, what it is that we want to filter this on, whether it's, you know, an asset or whatever. And when we open the report, that's how we tell Maximo what it is we want to filter on. So let's go ahead with grouping first. And before we do that, I'm just going to preview this report. And show you and get rid of some of these other ports up here. This is what we saw in the first slide. It's just a random listing of all the work orders that 
basically it's the query that we had up on the screen when we ran the report. Okay, so for work order tracking, I'm going to group this report now. And of all the objects that we had in our content, we've got nine objects here. When I click the magnifying glass here, it's going to show me all of those nine objects that I had in the report. So I can select any one of my business objects that I'm reporting on. And here's that work type that we grouped in the, in the um, slide presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna group on work type. And then when I preview my report again, you're going to see those blue lines that delineate the report based on work type. But again, we're still going to have three pages, which is a lot of information. But now you'll see that it is grouped by my work type. Let's go back to our report. I'm going to go ahead and group by a second parameter, and that's going to be status. So now I can preview my report and I'm gonna see it grouped by work order and status. And again, it's still gonna be three pages, but we're getting, we're narrowing down our report so that it's more usable. Go back to my report. I could do a third one, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna go ahead and move to sorting now. And sorting is the same way you can sort on any of those uh, business objects that you used in your content. So I'll go ahead and click the magnifying glass. And I'm going to go ahead and sort by failure class. I could also sort by any of these other ones. I'll go ahead and sort by priority as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview this report now that we've got it sorted and grouped. Give it a second to come up here. And what you're gonna see now is that the groupings remain and it's sorted within those groups. Had I not had the groups and done the sorting, it still would have sorted, but it would have sorted all of the information in the report and not just by group. So I have my groups. And now over here, like we saw in the slide, you can see that the failure class is sorted and it's in alphabetical ascending order. And this is probably a better one to look at to see the sorting for the priorities. We have the failure class sorted here. And then we have the priority within those failure classes sorted next to it. So we have HVAC first and then priority two and three, and then we have pumps and then we have ascending order of priority for our pump failure class as well. Let's go back to our report that we're creating. Now I'm gonna run and save this report so that I can show you when I open it, I'm gonna set my parameter here as asset. This is gonna require me to enter the asset that I wanna re write this report on but I may wanna see a report with more than just one asset. So I will uncheck the single parameter and I'm gonna run and save this report and it won't look any different from the sorting and the grouping yet. But when I go back to my work order tracking, so there's a report. Now I want to run this report So I, here's the report that I created. I could of course edit it or delete it here, but I'm gonna open it to run it. And here's where that filtering comes in. It's gonna require me to put at least one asset in here, but because I unchecked the box by the single parameter, I can put more than one. And then when I submit this report, you're going to now see that I no longer have three pages of reports, but it's narrowed the search down to only those two assets. You can see the asset here. But because I did the sorting and the grouping, it is still grouped 
with my parameter here of PM and status, and it's still sorted by failure class and priority. So is anyone using QBR here today? And that sorting and filtering and, and um, grouping might help you achieve the goals of your reporting and make them more strategic goal for decision making or even for tactical decisions that you make in the morning when you come in. If you have any questions, remember the um, the chat box is open. Feel free to send questions. And let me go back to my slides. Great. Thank you so much, Jackie, for the presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, to Starboard or uh, you can contact us at starboardconsulting.com. Yes. Please let us know if you have any questions and we look forward to seeing you in November. And thank you for attending. Thanks, Jackie.